Hello to my fourth graders. This is The Trail West, a historical fiction by Millie Howard, illustrated by Guy Porfirio. Hopefully I pronounced that right. But let's read page 132. Remember, if you have your book, you can follow along with me following the trail. The following story is a fictional account of the Lincoln family's move from Indiana to Illinois. The incident involving Abe Lincoln's rescue of the little dog is true. And I want you to think as you read, when and where does the story take place? What details in the story tell you about the setting? Moving ahead, a rabbit dashed out of the woods and down the hill, followed by a yapping little dog. With a flick of its tail, the rabbit disappeared down a hole. The little dog trotted around the hole, sniffing. Then, again yapping loudly, he began to dig. One ear perked up as he heard children's voices calling in the woods. Then he returned to his frantic digging. Sorry, by the way, if you heard that ding, that was my MacBook, and I need to put that on Do Not Disturb. Anyways, continuing on. Dog, a voice called sternly. A tall, thin young man tramped out of the woods. He stopped beside the little dog and looked at the wet dirt scattered around the hole. Dog, he scolded, shaking his head. You've been chasing rabbits again. One of these days, you're going to get left behind. Scooping up the dog, the young man called. Here he is. Abe found him, someone shouted. The shout was repeated again in the woods. Abe found him. Soon, Abe Lincoln's young nephews and nieces were gathered around him. All were out of breath from running. Chasing rabbits again, said one of the boys, trying to frown at the muddy dog wriggling in Abe's long arms. Let me hold him, Abe. I'll keep him from chasing rabbits, said one of the girls. Abe handed his little dog to his niece. You mind this time, dog, he said. No more, no more trouble from you. Here come the wagons, said Abe. The children looked up as Abe's father drove the first wagon over the top of the hill. The canvas top swayed as the oxen pulled hard in the mud. Mr. Lincoln cracked his whip and called to the oxen. Come on, boys. Mrs. Lincoln, Abe's stepmother, held onto the edge of the wagon seat as they started down the hill. Two other wagons followed the Lincolns. They belonged to Dennis Hanks and Levi Hall, Abe's brothers-in-law. Abe's stepsisters called to their children as the wagons came to a stop. Will we camp here for the night? Dennis Hanks asked Mr. Lincoln. It's a good place, Mr. Lincoln replied, looking amused around. Mrs. Lincoln stepped down from the wagon, wrapping her shawl more tightly around her. Looks like Abe's dog has found us a camping place, she said, smiling at Abe. He picked a good one, Abe said, nodding toward a stream close by. There's fresh water. Abe helped the men unhitch the oxen. Then they went into the forest with their long rifles. It was not long before they came back with a wild turkey. Soon, the smoky smell of roasting turkey brought hungry children crowding around the campfire. Mr. Lincoln thanked God for taking care of them on their long trip across Indiana. Then the cold and weary travelers ate until they were full. When he was finished, Mr. Lincoln stretched his legs. Well, I'm tired, but I'm still glad to leave Indiana. This has been a hard winter for us. Just think of spring in Illinois, sighed Mrs. Lincoln. I hope we can plant apple trees. We might if you'll bake your apple pies, teased Dennis. I hope the farmland is as good as everyone says it is, Levi commented. He moved closer to the fire to warm his hands. Land that does not have to be cleared or sounds fine to me. We'll still have time to plant crops this spring. And the game, said Dennis, deer and bear and everything else. We'll have plenty to eat. Then he laughed. We might even be able to fatten up Abe. Abe laughed with the others. His little dog stretched and yawned as Abe rubbed it behind the ears. You were right, little dog, said Abe. It's time for bed. Along the trail. The next morning, the little dog licked Abe's face. Abe opened his eyes. All right, all right, he said sleepily. Out you go. Abe climbed out of the wagon and set the little dog down. Then Abe looked around. Ice covered the puddles of water and hung from the tree branches. Spring's not here yet, dog, Abe sighed. The little dog sniffed the frosty air as he scampered towards the woods. Suddenly, a rabbit hopped out of the grass in front of him and dashed between the wagons. With a happy yelp, the chase was on. Abe laughed as the rabbit stayed just ahead of the little dog. Across the camp, they went back and forth. Then the dog ran too close to the campfire. He bumped the forked branches that held Mrs. Lincoln's pot. Ashes scattered everywhere and the pot fell down, trapping the dog. Heads popped out of the wagons. What is all that racket? Somebody get that dog out of my pot, called Mrs. Lincoln. Abe lifted the pot and picked up the little dog. See what I told you, he laughed. Leave those rabbits alone. With everyone awake, 
the day's work began. By sunup, the wagons were ready to move again. Ice cracked under the oxen's feet as they trudged along. Wagon wheels creaked and rattled west toward Illinois. Abe and the children walked beside the oxen. The little dog trotted behind them. As the sun rose higher in the sky, the ice melted and made puddles. In the afternoon, the wheels of the Lincoln's wagon stuck in the mud. The oxen strained and pulled, but the wagon did not move. The other men stopped their wagons to help. They cut branches and dragged small logs from under the trees to put under the wheels. Abe climbed into the wagon seat. Hi, hi, come on, boys, he shouted. The wagon still did not move. Wait, Abe, called his father. Dennis and Levi will help me push behind the wagon. As the three men pushed, Abe cracked the whip, shouting to the oxen. The little dog ran under the wagon and nipped fiercely at the oxen's heels. The oxen snorted and pulled. The wheels creaked as the wagon began to move. Come on, boys, shouted Abe. The wagon jerked and mud splashed everywhere. They were out of the hole. The three men wiped mud from their faces. Abe laughed as he jumped down from the high wagon seat. I had the best job, he said. His father picked up the muddy little dog. Your dog almost got stepped on, he said. Better put him in the wagon. Abe cleaned the dog as well as he could before putting him in the wagon. Stay there, dog. We have work to do. That was not the last mud hole on the trail. The travelers went through another and another as the spring rains began to sweep the country. The cold and rain sent the children huddling under the canvas tops of the wagons. At night, the puddles froze. The next day, the sun melted the trail into slush. But everybody was happy. They were going west. The closer they got to Illinois, the more they wanted to go on left behind. Then one day, the travelers came to a flooded stream. It did not look like they could cross it. Do you think we can make it across with the wagons? Asked Dennis, looking at the rushing ice-covered water. Mr. Lincoln shook his head doubtfully. It looks dangerous, he said. Let's see if there is a shallow spot upstream or downstream. The men walked in both directions, looking for a better place to cross, but there was no better place. They returned to the wagons where their wives waited. The children were playing on the bank, the little dog running at their heels. We'll have to cross here, Mr. Lincoln told the woman. Better get the children into the wagons. Quickly, the children climbed into the wagons and sat close to their mothers. They made no sound as the wagons creaked one by one into the water. If the wagons tipped over, everything could be lost. The thin ice cracked under the oxen's feet. Water rushed around their legs. Easy, boys, cried Mr. Lincoln as the wagon swayed. The wagon bumped along slowly as the oxen carefully felt their way. At last, they were on the other side of the stream. Good boys, called Abe. He and his father jumped down. Abe let the oxen out of the way as the other two wagons splashed by them. Look, Uncle Abe, called one of the boys leaning out the back of a wagon. There's your little dog. Abe looked out back across the stream. Sure enough, there was his dog dashing back and forth on the other side. Why didn't someone put him in the wagon, asked Levi. Abe groaned. I thought the children had him. He wasn't with us when we got into the wagon, said one of the girls, probably chasing rabbits again. Dog, I told you, you'd get left someday, Abe called. Over here, come over here. The little dog whined. He looked down at the broken ice and then back at Abe. He's afraid of the ice, Abe, said his stepmother. He won't swim across. Well, we can't help him now, said Mr. Lincoln. We can't take a wagon back across that stream. It's too dangerous. Abe, said Dennis kindly, we've got to go on. It'll be dark shortly. One of the girls began to cry. Abe looked at the little dog. The wagons can't go back across. But a man could, he said thoughtfully. He sat down and began to pull off his shoes and socks. You'll catch your death of a cold, cried Mrs. Lincoln. I can't leave him there to die, Abe replied as he stepped into the stream. Slowly, he felt his way through the rushing water. Thin, broken ice swept past his legs. Halfway across the stream, he slipped. The people on the shore gasped, but Abe caught himself and moved on, still feeling his way with his bare feet. When he reached the other side, the happy dog met him wagging his tail. Abe picked the dog up and looked across at the other shore. It would be even harder going back. How could he keep the dog still? Abe thought for a moment and then tucked the dog into his shirt. The little dog lay still as Abe began the crossing again. Slowly, step by step, he felt his way through the freezing water. His feet grew numb until he could barely feel the rocks underneath them. At last, he reached the other shore. The men pulled him up on the bank and Mrs. Lincoln quickly wrapped him in a blanket. You had us worried there for a minute, Abe, Levi said. Into that wagon, Abe Lincoln, his stepmother said cheerfully. You're soaked to the skin. Quickly, Abe obeyed. His stepmother was right. His feet felt like chunks of ice. He pulled the blanket around him and hugged the shivering dog. 
You had better give up rabbit hunting for a while, Abe said to the little dog. I wouldn't like to do that again any time soon. The dog whined and looked up at him, and he yapped once as if in agreement and curled up next to Abe. And that is the end of our story. Can't wait to hear your thoughts, but now we've got some think and discuss questions for you. And remember, you can get a notebook, you can write down what you think the answers are, or be ready to discuss this with a friend or your teacher. Number one, when and where did the story take place? You might need to go back and take a look and think about the images as well and see if they help you and give you a hint. Number two, what details in the story tell you about the setting? Number three, which characters in the story showed kindness to others? Give details to support your answers. And so this is when we can look to our text for evidence. Number four, what can you do to show kindness to others? And now we're gonna connect it to our own lives. How do you show kindness to others? What are actions that you take that display kindness? Some vocabulary to think about, barely, shallow, tramped, creaked, strained, trudged, downstream, swayed, unhitch, perked up, tearfully, wriggling, and scampered. And if you don't know the definitions to these words, remember you can ask your teacher, you can look them up. But now let's do looking again, beginning, middle, and end. So at the beginning of a story, the author tells us about the setting and the characters. In the middle of a story, the author tells us about a problem. At the end of a story, we read about how the characters solve the problem. So in many stories, not just this one, but many, you may find that there are problems, but usually there are solutions. And I want you to write the solution to the problem from the story on work text, page 51. And here we see this little graph that you can easily replicate if you're reading a different story, just not just this one. And we see how it has the beginning, the middle and the end. And so the setting, the trail from Indiana to Illinois, characters, Abe, Lincoln, his dog and his family. The middle has the problem, Abe's dog is always chasing rabbits and getting into trouble. And in the end, there was that solution, which can you fill in that blank? What do you think that solution was? We just read it, if you forgot or weren't paying attention, you can go back and read, listen again or reread the story. Thank you so much for reading along. See you next time.